All right, so we, we created a string, we created a dynamic string, and we, uh, uh, what we did, we, we went through uh, uh, all the things that it needed to, to go through rule of uh, five. Three, it's OP244, rule of three. Rule of three, and um, uh, we added few operator overloads for concatenating two, two strings. And we, we essentially encapsulated what C string does. So we didn't implement anything. And uh, we didn't implement anything from scratch. We literally made this what they call a wrapper around. So this C, this string function that we created in um, a programming terminology, it's a wrapper around the string header file of C to do what we are doing. To, the, to make this string actually act like uh, um, a character array when we need it, we added uh, one thing over here that's, that, that's, a, that's an assignment operator, and the, uh, uh, sorry, index operator, and the index operator uh, <clears throat> acts when uh, the object has uh, the index operator in front of it. And whatever index you have will be passed to this function as an argument. So in main in here, if we actually set a name, we can actually uh, we set the name like that. And uh, uh, we mentioned that um, we did this because we wanted to take over the index operator, make sure if they put indexes that goes beyond the limit of the data that we have, it won't crash. And it will loop back on. Um, our string, the way you're looking at it is like, um, so are we okay? Are we okay? Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that, that, I, 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 yeah, I saw you lost that a little bit there, so. Pardon me? Which top? We are talking about the string class we created last time. String class we created last time. We, we created the dynamic string, so we have an object that can deal with strings. So I don't have to deal with character arrays anymore. Okay, and uh, all the things that we created for it, we create the constructor, we create the destructor, we create the copy constructor, so it's copyable from here to there. Something to tell us what is the what is the length, and also we overloaded the int operator to do the same. Something to give us the address in, in, if, in case somebody wants to go low level on this and work on it like a regular array, they can still access it. Of course, it's going to be read only because it's a constant character overload of uh, casting of the string. If they cast the constant character, it actually works. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a string. It's a string that we have in C++, something like that. Yeah. So we do have a string class in, in, in C++. And if you include string uh, with lowercase s, everything is there and, and more. But we want to see what happens behind the scenes. That's what we are doing here. For the, for the, for, and, and when we, this overloading index operator was pretty good. It worked nicely. So for example, in here, when I, uh, let me just uh, run it and go through it, make sure everything's good. If you want to have a good practice, like to really understand, like do a review on your, IP, on your IPC 144, it's a good thing to go through this thing, remove C, include C string, and do everything manually. So make everything that it does manually without use of uh, string header file. If you do that, then believe me, you're going to be perfect in all the things that you need to do about uh, C, uh, IPC 144. Because working with arrays is very, especially strings, as a kind of a cryptic thing. Anyway, so it, uh, it's just to remember, uh, assignment at the moment of creation, one argument constructor, passes the constant character pointer in here. And uh, it uh, sets the data to null first. Then it checks, make sure what we are receiving is not null. And it's going to uh, allocate enough memory for the data copied in there. And therefore, our string now has Lisa in it. Now, when I say print name two, it goes to 
the index operator that I created and literally puts the two in here. So it becomes two mod SDR len of data and Lisa is four, so two mod four is two. Um, therefore, it's going to give index two. But if it goes more than length, then the mod loops it back. We talked about it, remember? You remember, right? We're okay with this? All right, so so that one's going to that one is going to print s for and the other one is going to print l because it's twenty mod four. It looks back and it's zero, so it shows the first one, and therefore the outputs are going to be like this. But what if I want to put that one at left side of assignment operator? What if I want to do something like this? What if I want to say it's not Lisa, it's Misa. I want to put a name zero is set to M. I want to do that. Now doing something like this is not right because uh, 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 we'll see what happens. Let me just, did we overload the, yes, we did the overload, the O stream. So let's do that. So in here, um, um, now in here, when it goes to the assignment operate, to the index operator, what index operator is re returning is what we call an R value. An R value is a value that can stand only at right side of an assignment operator. Returning a character by value back and putting it at left side of the operator is as if you say this. You can't do that. You cannot put a value at left side. You need to either have a reference or a variable, what we call an L value. An L value can be at left side. Either a reference or target of a pointer or a variable or an overloaded thing. So because of that fact, <clears throat> it would be better if I return reference over here. But the problem is that if I return the reference over here, because it is a constant, it won't allow me to do that because now I'm actually modifying the content of my class. Yes. Yes, we can. All right. So if I do something like this, still I'm not solving any problem. It is returning the reference, but because it's constant not to change, it's not going to be able to stand at left side because it's still a constant. So for that, <clears throat> I need to create another overload. Let me uh, put this one over here, name zero. So the next overload that I'm going to have, first let me set this thing right. So I'm going to make this a reference, and I'm going to make it a constant. Now <clears throat> I'm going to create another one that is not constant, and I can actually set it to something. which means it returns the reference of the, of the data out. Therefore, it is settable. I can set it to something. So it is not constant anymore, and it actually re returns the, the data out. Doing this is just fine. If I, if I actually write this like this, what happens is that when, when I actually run the program, what happens is that it prints those things too, and then it comes over here and selects the proper version of the, of the index operator and returns the reference out. And therefore, in here, if I say C out name, well, we'll see that because the reference of M data zero is sent back, it's going to be set to M, and therefore, what's going to get printed over here will be MISA. So I can actually make my string look like an array 2 if I want to. Problem is that if, I, if they exceed the index and pass the, uh, the SDR len, they're going to ruin this string, right? So for that, we can do a pretty smart thing. If they exceed it, what we can do, we can actually expand it automatically. We can create the resize function and just resize the thing if we want to. We've done it with arrays and stuff, so we can do it with this. There's no problem with that. We have the function. We are taking over of this action. So if, <clears throat> if it's 
if that's the case, then we can actually do it. Now, how we do that, I can, I'm going to do it manually over here, and later on you put it in a function you, if you want or something. But the resizing was done as follows. So the very first thing I need to do is to see if it's greater than the length or not, right? Because I'm going to do lots of length stuff, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to bother myself with uh, going through the thing over and over. I'm just going to say over here int is integer len is equal to str len of m data to see what is the length first. Okay, so now I have the length of the, the size of the data. I know what it is. Okay, it would have been, because we are using C string, I'm not keeping the size inside string. And it's a very inefficient design. This is awful what I'm doing right now. Every time anything is called over here, it has to loop through the whole thing to see what is the length and give us the size. It's always better to, when you have so much work to do with size here or there everywhere, when you have to do that, it's always better to keep the size and update it instead of revisiting the function every single time. But anyways, so I have the length over here. Now I have to say if the index that it's coming in is greater than or equal to length. So why greater than or equal to length? So I have five fingers, <laughs> OK? That's the length, right? The index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if index becomes 5, that is equal to the length, still I'm one short. So that's when resizing has to happen. So if index is greater than or equal to len, then I have to expand. Right? And I have to expand. How far I have to go? Size of index. So if index is 5, if I have 5, that's enough, right? So all I need to do is to have a character. <clears throat> is to have a character. That's going to make it very iffy, but it's OK. It's going to have a character, so character um, um, pointer temp. And I'm going to make that one new. What do I put over there? I'll put new character index. So that's going to be the length that I have. Index uh, plus one, actually. OK? So if index is five, I need six. If index is 10, I want 11. So it creates that one, right? And then I need one for null, correct? Because if it says 5, so, so if I have Lisa, Lisa, that's 4, it has 1 for null, so it becomes 5. Now if it's 5, I need to add one more and add one, another one for null. I'm telling you it becomes tricky. That's the reason for it. So plus one more null. OK, over here? So then after doing that, what I need to do is to SDR copy into temp the value of m data, and that's when it becomes extremely tricky in here. Why? I'm, I'm, the reason that I'm putting this out and confusing the heck out of you is to just show you how crazy it gets when you are dealing with resizing memory. What if I have Lisa, and they want to access index 9? Then I have Lisa and a null. Then it's 9 plus 2, 12. What do I do with the character between these? <laughs> OK? So why? Space is good? So, so sure, space. So you, you say between them, we're going to put space. Default, our default is space. Sure. Now write the code for it. How do we do that? I have to start from len, that is currently the size of the thing. One by one, I have to add space to it. So I have to say something like for i set to len and uh, i, i less than index, I think, and i plus plus. And I have to say, I need an integer over here, sorry. Now let's put the int i outside, so I'm going to put over here an i over here, okay? And <clears throat> I'm going to do it like that, then I'm going to say temp 
I is set to space. So I'm essentially filling everything with space over there, right? And after filling everything with space, now I'm going to say something like temp index is set to, oh, I need to have the temp index to be sent out, right? I have to resize everything as so. So um, I can't set anything over here. So what do I do? Um, uh, what I need to do is to make the next index null to make sure it's null terminated. And then after that, reset the whole site, reset the whole thing. So I first I set everything to blank. Then I'm going to say temp i, which is the next one zero. So that's null terminated. Now I'm going to say delete uh, m data. Now I'm going to say m data is temp, and I'm hoping that it's going to work. I just came up with it. I'm just writing the code, so I don't know. I've never done this before. So it's crazy, you see that. So again, it's just an example to show you how difficult it is to create an object that is flexible and works any way they want. The best thing to do, I believe, when you have situations like this is to leave your function as it was, so it loops back, and instead give them an option of resize. So they can check the size. They have the tools for it. They can cast it. They can get the length and see what is the size. And if it's not enough, they have to resize it and be responsible for it. Yeah, so it's like, it's like so again, I'm just going to leave it open-ended. I don't know how it's going to work out. <clears throat> Let me see. I, I will try it, and we'll see what happens. So if that's the case, then I don't need to have a mod over here. It's going to resize it. Let's see how it works out, OK? I have no idea. OK, so first I let, made Lisa Misa. Now I'm going to say name, <clears throat> name 10 is set to x. Let's see what happens. And that's usually how you write. And then you debug to see if you, that your thought was correct. And 99% of the time, it's not. So let's see what happens. If I actually run this program, I'm getting some warnings and stuff, but it's OK. So it comes right over here. And now <clears throat> I'm saying index 10. So definitely 10 is great. Len is 20? Oh, shoot, I had a 20. I, I did a 20 over here. <laughs> So <laughs> that 20, uh, all the resizes it. So let me just take that thing out. OK, one more time. So I have the MISA thingy printed over there. Now I'm going to say 10, so it comes in here. Now len is, uh, len is 4. Obviously, obviously, it's greater. It's going to say. Um, 10 plus 2, so it's 12. It's going to copy m data into temp. It's going to go over here. And it says i is equal to length, which is 4, which means it's going to start putting spaces after. Now, if you look at the data that we have in here, I, had, I, didn't, I don't have any watch, anything. I'm going to add over here this to see what I have. So that's my MISA thingy, right? Now it's going to start from i, and, and let's see what do we have in temp. So temp is MISA 2, right? Now, but temp is bigger. It has 12, right? So it comes over here and sets that one. So as you see, it added a space. And a space, and a space, and a space, space. And it reaches to 10, and it comes out. Oh, sorry. And comes out. And i is now 10, right? Which is the index it wanted to actually access. So maybe I have to go one more. Anyways, and makes 0 over there, so it cuts it short. Then it comes out. <laughs> then it comes out and sets it to x, because the reference. So it deletes m data, of course, and sets, uh, deletes uh, m data and sets m data. So now m data has that value comes out to the reference and set. Now if I look at the value of m, I have MISA and lots of garbage after x. So in here, I needed to write less than or equal. 
to go one more. Because <clears throat> that x just overwrote my null termination. I have to make next one null terminated. Now I think it's going to be OK. So now if I actually run the program, which is crazy. I mean, like, I don't know if, if you want to have it like this. So now, as you see, it's Misa space x. Oh, SpaceX. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> all right. Are we OK with this? So now you see how, what I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not backslash zero. Good question. You mean this, right? Oh, not that. Correct? So what is backslash? Backslash means ASCII code. So you say you're saying, I want the character whose ASCII code is zero. So put zero. Zero is zero. That is zero. This is zero. But you are saying, I want the character whose code is zero. Or you can put the code itself. Then it becomes the character zero. OK? So that's a good question. So if, if I don't put this one over here, it's not zero. It's the, it's the ASCII code of zero, the ASCII code of shape of zero. It's the, the character zero. When you put it here, you're saying, I want the character whose ASCII code is zero, which Sure. It, it would have. Been, yeah. Sure. Nice. Like, like if you're a geek, you can even do this. That's even better. Inside the single quote, yes. Not backslash zero by itself doesn't mean anything. It's a syntax error. Backslash only means something inside double quote and single quote. Backslash means the character with the code of. Yes. Because, first of all, I may have, I may, I may made a mistake. I don't know, but let's see. So, if the so I the size is five, okay. Now I'm accessing five, which means I am setting five to something. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. If you are setting five to something, shouldn't you put a zero after to null terminate it? So how many characters? One and two. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Am I? So index. Uh, so we are saying. Uh, let me see. So let me see. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. So I am setting the index. So it goes. I'm setting the index. To something, yeah, maybe you're right. We'll, we'll find out. You're right. Maybe I made a mistake. I have, obviously, this is not going to give us any. No, I didn't. <laughs> so I actually wrote so. So that terminology was right. Okay, because I'm adding one to it anyway. I need to have a zero afterwards. So that plus one is needed. Anyways, walk through with small things, and you'll see. Okay. Again, you see. Um, no matter how many times you program, how many years you program, you're never sure. You have to always do the thinking, write the code, and debug it and see if it works or not. Okay? So you never trust yourself. I never do. Okay? Yes? No! Backslash only in single quotes and double quotes. Backslash can only be in a single. I can have over here backslash zero. That means Lisa and a null after. I can put over here backslash 10. That means Lisa and a new line after. OK? So that if you want to have the, if there, is, if there is a character that is not printable, it's not on your keyboard, and you want to put it on a screen, string, how do you put it? You put backslash n. That means new line, right? That backslash could be the code of it, too. It's the same. So you can put backslash code. It means this character is not on my keyboard. I can't type it. I want to write its ASCII code. All right? 
I'm casting integer 0 to a character, which essentially this is the same as this is the same as this. So potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> they're all the same. Okay, they're all the same. All different shapes of zero. Okay. The reason uh, probably it's, it's telling me why you have done that. I don't know why is it giving me an error with it. It's not an error. It's like kind of a green error. What is the, uh, buffer over it while writing to tell? Yeah. Anyways, it doesn't know that. It doesn't predict. It can't predict how much I'm 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 adding. So. But anyways, I'm lazy. That's why I always put zero with it. Geeks do like this. Like, I'm going to say, I want, it's a character, but it's not. Yeah, you can do that. All right, so uh, that's that. So that's kind of showing how we can. So, but still, if somebody wants to just access something through a constant thing, now if actually I have something, uh, let's say void loop through, and in here I'll put string reference as, and I'm going to make it a constant because I don't want to change it. Now, or uh, backwards. OK? So if I want to actually do something like that, I can say for integer i set to s dot length minus 1 and i greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus. Now in here I'm going to say c out s i. Now the i that you see over here, uh, backwards name. So the i that you see that is accessed over here and that end of means a c out, because it's passed through a constant reference, you'll see what happens. Build errors, why? Initializing one. Oh, no, I have to stop the executable first. I have an executable running somewhere. And it's, oh, there you go. Yeah, so when I run this and it comes through all these things, when it goes to backwards over here, when it actually accesses the index, it's going to pick up automatically the constant one. Because s is constant, the constant, if you didn't have this overload, your program would have failed, telling that you cannot access the index operator because it modifies the object. And that's what it does. So now the index operator is actually doing uh, whatever it's supposed to do in printing backwards, uh, hopefully, if I wrote it correctly. And you're going to have X asim printed over there. All right, just printed it. So, yeah, it's backwards, right? All right. Oh, I should have stopped. Are we good? <clears throat> so, that's all the things that we have done from the beginning of the semester, kind of a review in one string, okay? Operator overload and all the good stuff that we have. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Okay, let's talk about family business. What I mean is this. Ladies and gentlemen, there is uh, a line that I didn't want to draw. Um, there is a, a class in C++ called IOS. This class is mother of all input output classes that we have. So any input output systems that we are dealing with C++ is a child of that. There are two famous childs of this thing over here. One, one, two. Okay, I'm sure I didn't talk about this in this class. Okay, so one is iStream, the other one is OStream. Okay, now iStream and OStream are special types of iOS. 
they only deal with keyboard and screen. Keyboard and string. String. Because string. Screen. Because of that, because they are dealing with unique objects that they cannot be more than one, the constructor of these two objects are private. What does it, what does it mean the constructor is private? It means you cannot instantiate it. Okay? So somewhere, somehow, that you don't know how yet, they privately instantiated these things into two objects and named those two objects as... So name two objects. And these two objects are called... C in and C out. So C in and C out are two objects, instances out of I stream and O stream. Why? Because they are unique thing. You need to have one keyboard. So you have one C in. You cannot have five C ins. You, if you could instantiate this, then it, what does it mean? Like, yeah. so, <laughs> you can't do that, right? So that doesn't make sense. So that's why they did it. Then. They said, we want to read and write from files. So unlike other things to create new functions for that, they said, it's the exact same thing. So iStream gave birth to an object. And so did OStream. And these two objects are called. are called IF stream and OF stream. Now, IF stream is dealing with files. It's reading from files, exactly as if you're reading from keyboard, but no stupid user. Anything that is in file, you can actually look at the file, see what's the format, and write the entry for it. You don't have a user over there sitting, making mistakes over and over. Oh, you put one more, one on less. Why? You don't need to do that. You simply read. If something fails, you're going to just send a message. 50th record had a problem. Please fix the file. You don't need to worry about interaction with user. But the thing is that, which file? You can have 50 different files. That's why the constructor of this guy is not private. If you want to access a file, you have to instantiate this for reading and name it something and associate it to a file on your hard drive. And that name of object work exactly like its mother. That is CN. Okay? So that's how inheritance works. It's a very bad example for it because that's not really inheritance, but my father actually was a teacher. He taught mechanics. I am far that I'm a teacher. I'm teaching C++. So the action of teaching comes from the father to the son. If you call me Mr. Soliman Lu, I'm going to teach mechanics. If you call me far that, I'm going to teach C++. But one of the wonders of C++ is that it can make a, a function upgradable which means I can say the teaching in teachers is an upgradable object, which means when you say, Mr. Soleiman, do teach, because you're talking to me, not my father, because he's dead and it's very difficult to talk to him. So what I'm saying is that if you actually talk to me, call me Mr. Soleiman, do, the teaching of Mr. Soleiman, do is looked at by the compiler. It's mechanics. But it says, wait a minute. This is flagged to be upgradable. Let me see if there is anything newware available. Looks at it. Oh, there you go. There's a new one over there that is teaching C++. So Mr. Sorry, Mandu will still teach C++. We're going to learn at the, the second half of the semester how we can actually make a, a function upgradable okay, in hierarchy of inheritance. But just for you to know, all the stuff in C in are upgradable. So exactly how you read from keyboard, you read from file. Only the object has to be file. Okay? Not only that, 
these two cousins got married. I know, freaky, but they did. <laughs> but, and these actually, they have a child. Why? I'll explain in a second. No, oh, what did I do? What did I do? So, I just killed OF Street. All right. All right, so now we're going to have this one and this one. They have an object created that is an amalgam of the two that are at the top, which is called F stream. Why did they do that? Because by nature, you read from keyboard. You cannot type on a keyboard. You cannot print on a keyboard. By nature, you write on a screen. You cannot read from a screen. But files can be read and can be written into at the same time. You can read five things, and you can write another things over here. So you can read and write. Because of that, they mix them together. That's called multiple inheritance. They have two objects. They gave capability of reading and writing for one So if you instantiate F stream, you can read and write into the same file at the same time. How? OP345, OK? If you just want to read, you do an IF stream. If you just want to write, you do an OF stream. And how does it work? It works as this. Didn't I say clear all? OK. OK. So. It's remembered that I had an F stream, let me print it. Anyway, so let's go back. So now, forget about this for now. I'm just going to uh, put it right down here. So let's close this. Uh, I'm going to call this string main. String main.cpp. And let's uh, have another one. So now, what do I do? I'm going to say over here, uh, see out, hello. And I'm going to make my see out print this thing with the width of, uh, say, 20. And see out dot fill with asterisks and make sure it is say left justified <clears throat> okay obviously i need include include um using namespace std to have access to those so if i do something like this and i print it out you'll see that it's going to print hello with asterisk, right? You okay with that? Any problem? No? Okay. And then in here, I'm going to say, right after, I'm going to say unset f, and I'm going to show it again. OK? It's interesting, actually. How come fill went away? Well, because onset, it, it has to be right justified. So onset f and c out does set, set f ios right, and then onset. Oh, it's the width. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies, my apologies, my apologies. Width doesn't stay. The others stick. Width does not stick. That was the reason. Yeah, there you go. That's better. Okay, so I have hello left and hello right. Are we okay with this? All right. I forgot that uh, uh, width sticks. 
width doesn't stick. Anyways, so now what I'm going to do over here is this. I'm going to say of stream hello.txt. And I'm going to give it a name. Hello. So the object, of, I'm, I'm, hi. <laughs> OK, because uh, you're going to tell me, does it have to be the same name of the, of the thing? No, it's not. So if you would have, is hi something that, oh, I need f stream for that. And by the way, everything is inside the f stream header file. IFS stream, OF, they're all in F stream header. Okay? So if you would have written a constructor for a file, what would have you pass to it? The name of the file, right? It's the same thing. So in here I have hi. Now instead of having C out, what I'm doing is this. Exactly the same thing that I did with CF. Absolutely no difference. And the output will be nothing. Why? Because it's just output into a file. If I actually look at it, you'll see there's a hello.txt over there. You open hello.txt, there's the value in it. OK? Now, remember I was screaming that, oh, when you are overloading something, make sure when you overload it, you have the signature of uh, the display to pass O stream through it. Remember that? Right? Now take a look at this. Let's bring that backwards thingy that we have done. So in here, I'm going to have, where's my backward forward thingy? Uh, I'm going to bring everything in here. You see that? And even the backwards. Let's bring that one too. So. So now, if I put these things in here, OK, so uh, do I have, uh, is my string in an STDS? Yes. OK, so now in here, if I actually take the C out and make it high, and high like that. If I actually do that, because high is OF stream, and that's a child of O stream, I can use its parent's name to call it. So it essentially says, instead of it, that's Mr. Soliman being called, <laughs> OK? So high, that is F stream, goes in here, and OSDR will actually point to that one. And when in here you go to display, your display is written properly too, because you're passing the, the O stream to it. So the O stream in your display would be, where is display? The O stream in your display will be still a reference of OSDR that is high. Then it comes over here, it's got to say, hi, mdata. Therefore, mdata of your name is going to go to a file because you wrote the display properly. But of course, backwards, it's not going to go because it's C out. So if I run the program, you will see that everything works exactly the same way. <clears throat> oh, is, why is it printing it out? Did I do something wrong in here? Hmm? Oh, I have a C out in here. Sorry about that. Do I have another C out? Oh, yeah, backwards is fine. That's, that's what I wanted to show you. Because it's C out, it's going to go backwards. I have no way to do that. It is C out backwards, it's going to go in that one. But if I actually now look at high over here, <clears throat> I'm going to have S and Lisa and all the things in there. OK? So it doesn't matter if you're using IS stream, because it's parent of IF stream, it's going to still work. So keep your signatures the way I told you. Create up, overload your 
your uh, insertion and extraction operator the way I asked you, it works perfectly with files. Again, we are only dealing with text files, not binary. Binary is 345. We are only dealing with text files. So, uh, reading from a file. How do we do that? Um, in one of the workshops, we had some Simpsons, Schmipsons thingy file, right? Which one was it? Anybody remembers? Three? Okay. So let's write something that actually reads that. See how difficult it is in C++. So I'm going to have over here workshop three, you said, right? In lab? Yeah, one. I have a Simpsons over here. And I have a, what is this? Let me see. That's the credit card information, right? Oh, these are all the things, right? Holy schmoly, right? These are all the things that we have. So let's, uh, it's a challenge. Let's see if we can actually read this. Okay. What is this, this one, 11, to, I don't even know what I did over here. Let me see what is the other one. This is too long. <laughs> I will try that one too. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let me see. No, that's only name. That's too short. I wanted to have some stuff to read. <laughs> okay, so, so I will, we'll, we'll do the other. We do the CC one. So we'll do the CC one. So CC, I'm going to copy that and put it in today's thing. Where is it? Make sure you watch the lecture for the other one, too, okay? The other one, we did other things. So it's like having two different examples, right? Look at theirs and this one. Uh, where was I? What is marking? Uh, what am I? Where is this place? Oh, there you go, okay. NAA. I got disoriented. <laughs> Okay, so I'll paste it over here. Now I want to actually read that thingy and, and I want to read it and display it on a file. See, display it on the screen. I want to see how, how, I, how I want to do that. So uh, let's save this one. I'm going to say over here, file input. So uh, it be file out.cpp. So we want to read. Let's get rid of the string. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. And add it over here so we can actually see it. So, so we have these two. Now let's try and read this. So <clears throat> uh, if I want to read these things, I'm going to do it. Um, should I do it object oriented or or C stuff? Should I create a class and read it in it or uh, maybe a class? So class, what is that information about? It's credit card. So it's name, name, credit card number. What is this thing? Oh, so this is and what, 11, 12, 7, What are these? Month and year. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so let's do that. Good. So class credit card. Am I writing the answer for the thing? <laughs> so this is how my memory is. So you know, I don't remember what I did yesterday. So we're gonna have a name over here. I'm not gonna do dynamic. We just want to learn how we're gonna do stuff. So so character name, and I'm gonna put 128 over here. And then we have a long, long. Uh, uh, Credit card number, right? Credit card number, and then we have uh, uh, int month, right? And we have an int year. And we want to read all these things one by one. So I'm not going to create a constructor or anything like that. I'm just going to read it and write it. Yes. Oh, oh. So integer, what was that? CVV. So in here, I'm going to say public read. 
So I'm going to do a or load. Let's call it load. So it is, I can do O stream because you know it's the same as OF stream. So they can act, if you do that, they can actually get it from the keyboard too. But I will do OF stream just to um, put an emphasis that this is from file. So I'm going to have OF stream reference load. And in here, I'm going to have OF stream reference file. <clears throat> so I'm reading from a file. What's going on here? Are we good? I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm okay. All right. So this is what we have. Let's split the window and see how we're going to read it. Number one. Okay. I want to read up to comma. What C in function does that? Get line. So I'm going to go file dot get line. What is going on? Oh, IF stream. IF stream. What's wrong with you? Okay, IF stream. Get line. I'm, 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 I'm feeling something's fishy in here. So it says IF stream. So get line. I'm going to get it, get it in M name up to 128 and stop at comma, right? And it's going to uh, eat the comma and throw it away. Are we good? Then I have to read the long number, right? How does C in read it? With extraction operator, right? So I'm going to go file MCC. And it's going to stop at comma, right? We don't want comma. File dot ignore. That's the comma that is gone. Now I need to read the CCV thingy. So I'm going to say file. MCVV and file.ignore. The good thing about it is that you see the file. You know, you follow what I'm saying? You see what the format is. You write it for that. There is no if thingy over here. Is it three digits or two digits? You don't care. You just go through it like that. If you want to do validations, you can. But you're not going to ask the, the user to enter it again. All you need to do is to put the file in a set, in a in a fail state, as, as simple as that. As, because file, if it hits, the, it hits the end of the thing, or uh, for example, in here, this is not a number and, and a character thingy, then it's going to fail, right? So what you need to do, you can, for stuff like this, you can actually set your object into a, manually into a fail state. So if you want to validate it, you can actually do something like saying, if uh, MCVV is, is less than 99, less than or equal to 99, right? It has to be three digits, right? Or is greater than 100, or greater than 999, right? If that's, if that's the and. Uh, or, 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 or. So if it's any of these, then I should fail, right? How do I do? I go file dot set state iOS fail bit. So what I'm doing over here, I am manually telling to file to fail as if something went bad. And you know what happens when CN fails. It won't talk to you anymore until you clear it, right? So that's going to, and because you're going to return the, the file back, they can check the state. If the state is failure, then it's not going to read. We'll test it. I'm just going to put it over here for you to see. So that's just for test over there. Anyways, so ignore. And then after that, I want to read the month. So you can do validation for the month and stuff. But again, you don't ask the tell it to enter anything else. You just say, hey, fails. You, you fail, OK? Uh, so I'm going to say over here, file greater than, what is the other one? Uh, month, right? And again, ignore. And file M year. And after that, it's going to be new line, right? Right? So file dot ignore, say a thousand characters and backslash it. 
if they have anything after the record they just want it to be dumped so like that i read it and i'm done so what does ignore returns it returns the i stream itself right so i can simply say return over here uh, return or you can make it rookie and say return file so now this load of yours is going to read one read one record and go to the next one right so now if i want to display this thing and see how it's displayed um, I'm going to go uh, O stream reference display. You know the routine for that. O stream reference. What is that? Tell me. Um, uh, OSTR, uh, STDC out. Okay. And in here, I'm going to say C out. Oh, that's a long one. How do I write it? I'm going to say, I'm going to show the credit card number first. So that's going to be MCC and close that one, then show the name and name. And actually, let's put the expiry date over here. This over. So I'm going to put it like this, and it's going to be a dash. And we're going to have uh, M month, month. M year and then close the curly bracket and show the name of the person. I think we're gone. We're done. Obviously, I'm not going to go to new line. I want them to decide if they want to or not. And that's not see out you bad person. It's OSDR. If I did see out, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't have been upgradable. Yeah. So in here, I'm going to say return OSDR. And I can overload it too, quickly, just as a review. Uh, where is the end of my class? Oh, here it is. So now in here, I can say O stream reference uh, operator uh, insertion, O stream reference OSDR. At right side is a constant. It has to be constant. I forgot. Why is it giving me an error in here? We'll find out. No. Why is it giving me an error? Anyways, we'll find out. Oh, maybe because of, uh, we'll, we'll give you a second. A constant, uh, uh, what is, it's CC, right? CC reference uh, uh, right operand. <laughs> that was the reason. Anyways, it, okay, right, it's going to say return right operand display and pass the OSDR to it. There you go. So I have it. Now if I want to read this, I'm going to say IF stream um, file again, and the file, or I'm going to say CC file, and in here it's going to be cc.com separated value. That's the file that is going to open for reading. Then I'm going to say while CC file is valid, it's okay, it's, it didn't fail, while it didn't fail, then read from a file. So I'm going to create uh, in here. What is the name? Uh, it's CC, right? Is it? Yeah. So that's CC. Now I'm going to say uh, uh, CC dot uh, load, and I'm going to pass CC file over here. So that's going to read from the file, and if that is successful. I'm going to display it, so I'm going to say uh, C out, CC, and I'm going to go in now. That's it. Do I need to close the file? No, it has a destructor. It closes it by itself. So it's going to say, was the opening successful? Yes. Now, load. Load goes over there and reads everything and returns the CC file, right? So if that is returned, it's inside an if statement, again, returns true or false if it failed. Or if it failed, it's not going to show anything. If it doesn't fail, it shows the values. And I don't know how it's going to run. We'll find out. We're going to run it and see what happens. It's going to crash or it's going to go through it. There we go. 
the whole file is read. Okay? Easy and simple. So it's much, although it's not like printf that you do one thing in one line, but it is much easier because it's, I don't know, it's object oriented. It's much easier to work with. Okay? Now, if I make one of these wrong, let's try it. I'm going to actually go over here, right in here, I'm going to make this one a big number. RT ZIF, okay? Or whether that's going to be. So if I save this now and I compile and run it, that's all it reads because it fails at that point. I set it to failure. Okay? And you can do that with month, you can do that with year. And what you can do if it was premature. So um, if it was premature, you can say, um, so you know how to do it, right? You first go through all the new lines, you find out how many rows you have. If it's a match the size, then it means it's, so, so first you see how many new lines you have. That means that many records you have. If the numbers you read is not equal to that one, you want to just put a row number in here, it says fail to read record number, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Very simple. And it's, you can do many other things. Like, let's say, um, so in here I'm going to say read file. Let's say I want to copy a file. How do you copy a file? How do we copy a file? Like if I want to copy a file, how is it supposed to be done? What is the smallest unit that you have in a file? One character, right? So keep reading one character and write it down. When it fails, you're done. File is copied. As simple as that. How can I do it? Say, if I want to write a file copy thingy, and here I'm going to do it like this. So. Um, character in file, 256, character out file, uh, no, not in file, in file name and out file name, 256. So what do we do? We uh, first ask the user. So I'm going to say, uh, see out uh, source. Yes. Did I what? I didn't. I didn't. I think I did. I know, I know, I know, but I think I, I yeah, read file. Whew, okay, all right, I thought I'm losing my mind. Well, anyways, thank you. Okay, so, so I'm going to go over here, C in the line, uh, 250, uh, into in file name, and I'm going to put uh, 256, and stop as backslash n, and um, then in here I'm going to say C out, destination, and in here, I'm going to say cn.get line out file name. Oh, out file, file name. So out file name 256 and new line. Okay, so I read the files. Now I'll open them both. So I'm going to say uh, if stream from source, I want to read from source, right? So I'm going to say if stream in file, and I'm going to put over here in file name. And I'm going to have of stream out file, out file name. Okay, how do I know if it's successful or not? I'm going to say if. In, if not in file, if in file is not, I'm going to say see out could not open. What is it? What am I that opening? Could not open. Uh, um, yeah, out file name. Uh, in file name. In file name. And you can actually print that now that we know all these things. You can print that on C error. 
C error is another instance. So C out is actually, uh, O stream is actually instantiated in three things. C out, C error, and C log. So there are three, three things. So that's an error. I'm showing it on error. They're all on screen, don't worry. But if C out fails and you have to clear it out, you can still print our C error. Okay? Or you can disable, uh, like write all your debugging statements using C log and set the C log's fail bit to true. And suddenly C log will not print anything anymore. So you can turn it on and off. So these are pretty useful stuff to do. Anyways. So if in file, it's going to say could not open that one. And the same thing as out file. Could not open the other one. So could not open. And this one is out file name. Now, if they are both successful, what do I need to do? So if I'm here, we are good. So I'm going to say if in file and out file. If they're both good, life is beautiful, and everything's okay, I'm going to read one by one and put it in the other one. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, I need a character, of course. So character ch. So in here, I'm going to say uh, ch uh, is set to in file dot get. OK, exactly like get, like c in. It receives one character and returns it. And then I'm going to say if in file didn't fail, if it wasn't end of the file or whatever, then C out or <laughs> out file uh, CH. Or if you want to be nice, you can actually say out file dot put CH. And that put is overloaded for 50 different things. You can put anything you want. So there you go. It's, it's copy. And it's got to close it afterwards. So I can copy anything I want. Save it. Save it. OK. So now I'm going to run this. So it's going to tell me, what is your source file? I'm going to say source file is main.cpp. What do you want to copy it into? d uh, file copy dot cpp and when I look at it you'll see that I have a d dash file copy that is not copied <laughs> what did I do uh, only one thing uh, oh I forgot to put loop yeah. <laughs> while <laughs> while in file Why not? It's a file, right? After so, it's <laughs> one thing that was really dumb and funny at the same time. So, what was the thing? D, D right? D dash file copy. That's it. Okay. Hopefully, this time it's copied. So, there you go. All right. So, and it copies exactly the same thing. No difference. Yeah, or the path is incorrect. You can put a path. You can say C column, C column backslash this, backslash that. If it doesn't find the path, it cannot create it. If it tried to create it, but it can. And that's it. So this is the extent. We can open the file for many different things. We can read, open the, uh, uh, the file for writing for many different ways. I can open a file for appending. And I'm going to say open the file. Don't overwrite it. Add to the end of it. And we have something called ATE, which is add to end. Why? Because sometimes you want to add to end and then come halfway through, do something in the middle, then go back, forward. Append always writes at the end. And those are done like this. So if I wanted to, if I want to append, which I do not want to, all you need to do is to say iOS append. And, and, and you put an as a bar, and you can add many more options. I want it to be a pending. I want it to be add to whatever you want. You can add. This is three, four, five again, not now. Okay, so you can actually have different nodes to open this thing with, to work with. Are we good? And those are files, ladies and gentlemen. Have fun with workshop six.
previous example. Why everybody's beaten? It was, oh, you weren't like that before. Like, like you are like, and first of all, the population is like, poof, <laughs> half of you vanished. I think, I don't know, it's getting close to the break. And people, people I got like five emails that we are going to, I don't know, India and, uh, and here or there. They're, they're, Oh. Why? They can do full time. They can study and work full time. Oh, that, that's going to be fun. Okay. All right. <laughs> Are you crazy? You're reading from the same, you're right. You want to crash my computer? No, I'm not going to do that on my computer. Do it on your own computer because it's going to keep it right. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. No, you cannot do it. CC5 is IF stream. It, it doesn't have capability of writing. It's going to give you an error. It's not overloaded for it. It's like you say, what do I do? What can, can I print on C in? You're saying CC file. What is the type of CC file? Can you, can you, can you do this? Yes, you can, but that's F stream, and that's OP345. That's F stream. With F stream, you can do iOS in, iOS out. So you can open an F. So this would be the same. I could do this. Look at this. F stream. OK, it's now only for input. But, but F stream has both capabilities. I'm only using the input. I can say I want it to be, I want it to be out. out. Huh? iOS is a class. These are the, these are the uh, um, global constant variables in them, so you can use them. Those are bit patterns. You are doing it. I cannot explain. Is it the uh, 345? Yes. Okay, so know. this is a bitwise or. <laughs> this is a bitwise or. Bitwise or. And these are binary ones and zeros. So this one has the second bit as one. This one has the third bit as one. When you or them, or them then second and third become. So it, it's like you have a series of switches. You're turning them on. These are bit patterns. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> exactly. So that's why we don't have it, and that's why please don't, <laughs> please ignore it and don't do that. I'm just going to wipe it out. I don't want to have it here. And let's, let's just, for now, focus on reading and writing. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You, so what you can do, you can you can literally go back and forth in your file. You can go halfway through your file, change something, and go back and forth. But with text files, that's very dangerous. Like, let's say I have uh, Lee with L I, and I want to change it to L E E. And the file is six megabytes, six gigabytes, and I want to do it halfway through. How can I do that? I have to shift. Six gigs, like five, two, three gigabytes of information to write because I want to put one E over there. It's very, you can't do that. Okay? It's not like a memory that you go, oh, allocate, copy, real. It's hard disk. It's time consuming. It's very slow. Okay? That's why we need to learn how to do binary input output. Binary input output don't put the, does not put the text in a file. 
it puts the class in the file in its binary format. Therefore, all records have same size. Text, names become big and small. You have to go for a delimiter. If you want to find out how many records you have, you have to count the backslash ends. But when I have equal length for each record, all I need to do is to divide the size of my file by the size of my class, and I have the, so it's just, everything becomes calculation. If I want 20th record, if I want 900th, re 900th record, all I need to do is to multiply the size of the class to 9999 and jump to that address. So I don't have to read everything to go to that record. That's binary read and write next semester. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Yes, anything. Okay. All right. All right. Have yourself a beautiful day. Let me push these. Monday, when you're coming back, you're walking into a test. Okay? After the study break. Remember that. Be early because you have to set up your computers. Make sure you have everything ready to start. Okay? When do we have the what? It is on the thing. It's on, yeah.